Hey folks, welcome. My name is Emily and this is Gently Chaotic Knits. And this is generally a video podcast series about what I have been knitting and making. Mostly knitting. Sometimes I talk about spinning, sometimes some other crafting if I um, feel like it, I guess. And, <clears throat> oh, sorry, I've got a little... <clears throat> A little something in my throat. I am recovering from being sick, so that is part of the reason why it's been so long since I've done a regular kind of project update video. Uh, if In case you missed it, I did a couple of videos toward the end of last year and the beginning of this year about all the garments that I knit. So I don't know what my hair is doing. It's being kind of funky. Okay, I'm gonna try not to touch it the whole time. Whew. I <laughs> posted in the last like few weeks a video about all the garments that I made in 2023 and then also one about reflecting on my kind of goals from and like my year of knitting from 2023 and setting some new goals for 2024 so I will link both of those videos below but it has been I think like I don't even know how long it's been probably it just feels like forever. It's been like two months or something like that since my last project update video. Uh, and so I am taking some time today. It is Thursday, January 18th. I'm taking some time today to finally sit down and record a project update video. It is going to be a long one. I can already tell it's going to be a really long one, but bear with me. And I've got lots of really fun stuff to catch up on. So like I mentioned, I'm a little bit sick in case you don't know I guess normally I do like a little intro about where I live and all that kind of stuff and things are a little bit crazy right now you might also notice the background and my my filming location is a little bit different I keep moving around and trying to find the best light in this house but I'm currently in Norman Oklahoma this is my parents house that I'm in right now my husband and I for the last I guess since September so I don't know how many months that is, like five or six months, have been traveling pretty much full time. However, we did just have to cancel our most recent trip because I got pretty sick. Um, it wasn't like COVID or anything, but after the holidays, I think there was just a ton of stuff going on. And so I was down and out for a while. I actually took a short trip with my family to New Orleans to see my brother play. He is a musician. And so... Um, it was actually on that trip that I got pretty sick and so we were planning on doing a shorter trip actually to Arkansas after that and <clears throat> just didn't make it because I was really sick. So um, we've been back and we are not leaving for our next trip for about a week, actually exactly a week from today. And so I thought this would be a good time to sit down and chat with you all. I finally have a, a moment where I'm feeling well enough and uh, am back at home in the place where all my stuff is. So I wanted to sit down, talk to you about things I've finished since my last project update, the sweater that I finished. I have another sweater that I finished. So I wanted to talk about all those things and yeah, just catch up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get into it because I'm going to, sorry, there are, there are three dogs and one cat in this house and they are sometimes a little bit noisy. So I Sorry, please um, forgive me for any background sounds. But anyway, let's get into it. It's going to be a long one. So hopefully, yeah, buckle up and grab your knitting and, and a beverage. I'm still trying so badly to hydrate. I'm just like coming off of sickness and drinking as much water as I can. So I'll probably be doing that <clears throat> throughout the video as well. But finished objects, I actually have five. I think I have five finished objects to share with y'all. So I guess that is the good news about waiting so long in between episodes is that there's like lots of really good stuff to share. First finished object I am wearing. This is my Aurelia pullover by Sari Nordland. Um, and sorry if I'm looking down too. I've got my notes here. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm also, like, sitting on a bed doing this. <laughs> anyway, we're just, we're just doing our best. This is my Aurelia Pullover by Sari Nordland. 
I knit it using Sorelli Yarn Cashmere DK in the colorway Brick. And I knit the size 2 and used a US 7 needle. I don't remember what needle size the pattern calls for. It may be a 7. I also, <clears throat> I really should measure it to see how close my gauge is. I think my gauge is actually quite close. If anything, it may actually be a touch on the tight side. Um, but I think it's pretty close. Uh, I love the way that this turned out. I am so happy with the way that this turned out. I think that the fabric, it f like the drapiness of the fabric feels perfect. I think the stitch definition is incredible. I think the fit is amazing. I love this sweater. I finished it right in time for the holidays because I really wanted to wear it for like basically every single holiday event. And I did do that because I... I think it's perfect. It's a perfect holiday sweater, but it's also just a perfect sweater. The yarn is so soft because it has that little bit of cashmere in it, but also just like super wash yarn. Feels really, really good. Um, <clears throat> let's see, what else can I say about this? I did not hate knitting this sweater as much as I thought I was going to. Um, I mean, this, like just looking at the sweater, you probably think, okay, this is a product knit and not really a process knit. Like you want to have the sweater. And maybe like knitting it might be a little bit brutal just because of all the cables and everything, but it was not bad to knit. I actually really enjoyed it, which is good news because I am going to be knitting another one and I'll talk about that in a second, but I really didn't mind knitting it. I knit a lot of this on a trip that we went on in December. We, my husband and I did like a national parks road trip in for to the parks in Texas and New Mexico and so we did lots of driving and luckily my husband did a lot of that so I was able to knit in the car while he was driving a lot of the time and so I got a lot of this done at, on that trip and I actually really enjoyed working on it maybe it's just because I was in the car and like there was anything else really that I could be working on but I really liked it um and I think it turned out I mean, it turned out perfectly. I think the sleeve length, this is like my exact perfect sleeve length. I can show you the body length a little bit more. Oh, and here's like kind of a close up of the cables. I love this detail in particular, the raglan, and it actually that kind of detail continues on the sleeves as well. I love that. And oh my gosh, there's so many baubles. <laughs> but here's kind of the length of it. I like to tuck it into my my pants just a little bit on the front, but the collar I think is perfect. Everything about this sweater, I love. I've worn it styled like a, a several different ways with black jeans, with white jeans. I have a black skirt that I wore it with that I really liked. Um, I think it's just perfect. I think it's gorgeous and this red color I've been so into right now. So yeah, this was my last garment that I finished of 2023. I did finish this, I believe, like, I don't know, December 21st or something like that. So like right before Christmas. And I'm in love with it. So I did mention I am going to be knitting another one. My friend Maya, she and I actually cast these on together multiple times um, and <clears throat> ended up just like not being able to get them done and part of that was because Maya had an injury to her elbow and it seemed like cables specifically were like kind of irritating her elbow so we kind of pivoted and knit different garments but uh we had the idea that so if you've watched my videos before you probably maybe I don't know if I've talked about it but you may have noticed that I almost never knit color work because I don't like knitting color work I just I feel like it's too slow and I just I it's too finicky for me and I just really don't like knitting stranded color work. I've knit mosaic before which I don't hate and I'm happy to do and will do again but stranded color work I'm not a fan and so I had the idea that Maya could knit me a color work sweater and I could knit her a cabled sweater that way, like, I could have a beautiful color work sweater and not have to knit it myself, and I could knit her cable sweater so that she doesn't have to use her elbow 
And a couple of my other friends have actually done this before, or I don't know if they've done it, but they had the idea to do this. A couple of my friends, Sylvan and Katie from my Seattle knitting group, have done this before because they also have a similar feeling where like one of them likes knitting cables but not color work and the other one likes knitting color work but not knitting cables. And so like you can do a sweater swap this way where you're like knitting the same number of sweaters but you get to knit the thing that you like to knit more. And I actually have Maya's yarn, let me grab it and I can show you. So also look at how cute her little project bag is that she sewed and sent me her yarn in. But she had started the sweater, so here it is. So she has the beginning part. And look how gorgeous is this color. This is making me think like I'm gonna knit Maya's and then maybe I need to knit myself another Aurelia in this color because it's so gorgeous. But so that is where hers is at. And so I am gonna finish it. So I have like all the yarn and everything in here. Here's a close up of that color. How stunning. I'm obsessed with this color. I believe it's La Bien Aime. I think this is La Bien Aime Merino DK, and I think the colorway is Emmeline. I'm not 100% sure, but I will double check with Maya before I post the video and I can put the colorway name in the description box. But my goal is to, I, I, I didn't want to work on this right after finishing my Aurelia because I wanted to give myself a little bit of a break. So I knit mine and then I finish up another sweater. I'm going to do one more garment. Um, which I'll talk about a little bit later in the episode and then I'm gonna come back to this and hopefully do this kind of in the spring like in the March April time period and Yeah, so that'll be my Aurelia part two. But anyway, my Aurelia is finished I love it and I'm gonna knit another one for my friend Maya and then we will match which I'm also very excited about so That is my first finished object next I don't know what order to do these in. Let's do the socks. So I think I mentioned in my last episode that I'd better have these socks done by the time I record <laughs> next, and luckily I do. So I finished two pairs of kind of Christmas holiday socks that I'd actually finished knitting the socks forever ago, but I finally like finished, finished them. So I have my totally rad ribbed socks by Summer Lee, and then I also have just some like basic vanilla socks using some Christmas self-striping yarn from Nomadic Yarns. So I brought, I think I brought a sock blocker so that I can kind of put these on and show them a little bit better. The Totally Rad Ribbed Socks use a yarn baker sock set that we actually had at La Mercerie, I guess last year, like the winter of 2022. Um, or like December, November, December 2022, I think. And it's from Yarn Baker. These look a little bit wrinkly because I have worn them. But the, yeah, the yarn is from Yarn Baker. The sock set is called Heavy on the Cinnamon, I believe. And I think it's really cool because it's a like tonal main color and it's a variegated contrast color so you can see the variegated in the toe there you can also see the fuzzies because I've worn these a couple times and then the heel actually is I believe La Bien Aime Yana which is a really gorgeous dark green that went really well with it so I finished these um all I had left to do I think was just like sewing down the the top part and yeah heavy on the cinnamon yarn baker don't remember what size I knit. Probably the smallest size. This was before I fixed my sock gauge, or I guess just fixed my gauge in general, so they're a little bit big. But <clears throat> that's okay. They're ribbed, so they fit well enough. And then these socks are just like a vanilla sock. I did a true afterthought heel, so that was the part I had to finish for these. And so this was actually my 2022 Christmas Eve cast on. Um, Maya and I did a little self-striping sock Christmas Eve cast on 
and I had finished the tubes and just needed to put the heel in for basically most of the year <laughs> and I finally put the heels in like I don't know a few days before Christmas <laughs> so I got the heels in both socks and I wore these like on Christmas and stuff I wore these while we cast on our next self-striping socks which I'll show in a minute um because those are not done yet but Yep, so I have two pairs of finished socks. So that was great. I don't remember, I think I did 56 stitches on this one again, and this is a US size zero needle. My sock gauge was really loose until I made a couple adjustments. So <laughs> this was pre-fixing my sock gauge, but it's better now. I may have actually overcorrected. I'm worried that some of the socks I'm knitting right now are too tight. So <laughs> eventually I will get my perfect sock gauge, but that time has not come yet. So those are my two pairs of finished socks. Again, I think I've talked about these several times because I kind of finished them before, but I just had to do like the heels and the, and sewing down the top part and like weave in all the ends and block them and everything. And so I've done that. So two pairs of Christmas socks done. Next, I knit the Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordland. This was a mystery knit along. Um, kind of through the month of December and I think I shared about this a little bit on the last episode but it wasn't finished yet so here is my turtle dove shawl and I just blocked this a few days ago how gorgeous is this I love this shawl I feel like it turned out so cute okay well I loved knitting it and I love looking at it and I think it turned out really cute and beautiful I don't know actually how to wear it at all so that is one, <laughs> one thing that's a little bit of downside, but <clears throat> again, this is the Turtle Dove Shawl by Sari Nordland. The yarns I used were Explore Knits and Fibers Denali Sock in the colorway Moonstone, which is the kind of lightly variegated color. And then I held with it a mystery kind of like mohair silk. I'm not sure exactly. It was kind of like a light pink color. I am not sure what yarn that is. I think it was just leftover from a project. I kind of think it was leftover from my soiree sweater, but I could be wrong, but I think so. But here, I'll kind of hold it up so you can see the halo and everything. There's a beautiful halo because of the mohair. And I think the very, like the subtle variegation, especially with, held with the mohair is just gorgeous. Um, there was no size or anything. I don't even remember what needle size I used for this. I kind of think it was a four, but I don't really remember. So it was a, it was a fingering weight yarn and a lace weight, like the silk mohair held together. Um, I guess I can wear it kind of like this. I'm not sure. I was like goofing around with my family trying to figure out how to wear this. And they were like, suggesting that I wear it like on my head kind of like a bonnet and stuff this isn't bad I feel like that's kind of cute like a little kerchief you know that's not so bad and it definitely keeps my neck warm for sure do people wear them the other way it's kind of like a bandana as well I feel like it was just a touch bigger it'd be easier to wear like that I guess I could just kind of wear it well I don't know if you guys have suggestions for how I should wear this I think that's kind of cute, but it doesn't really stay. I feel like I feel like I need to tie it twice. That's why I wish it was a touch longer. Maybe I can get a second. Is that cute or is that weird? I don't know how it looks in the back either. I that's kind of cute, right? I don't know. Or my hair is kind of too short now. I feel like to wear it in my hair. But I know some people wear these, like, in their... No. <laughs> it's this... Do you feel like this looks good? <laughs> you gotta pull the pieces out, right? That's how you make it. <laughs> oh. Or, like, you know... Like... Like this or like underneath is it supposed to go underneath my hair <laughs> oh 
I don't think. <laughs> I'm not sure. Is that cute or no? <laughs> I just don't think I have enough hair for this. Like, it's sticking out so weird where it's been tied. I don't know. I feel like it just... I don't have enough hair. That looks so weird. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, I'm not sure. Maybe... I think that wearing it kind of like this was my best shot. I don't know. This may be something that I just um, appreciate that I knit it and that it looks beautiful and that I don't actually wear that much because I can't figure out how. But anyway, that's the Turtle Up Shawl by Sari Nordland. I feel like if it was maybe a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger, it would be easier to wear, but it's just like kind of an awkward size for me. I know these like little shawls have been so popular and I actually have some other yarn in my stash that I kind of wanted, I had earmarked to make things like this with, but now I'm nervous. But maybe if I make it like a little smaller or a little bigger, it'll work out okay. I don't know. But anyway, that is my turtle dove shawl. And then my last finished object is actually another sweater. I finished this just a couple days ago and I blocked it and it's still a tiny bit damp, but I'm going to put it on anyway. So let me grab it. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back with my new sweater. And here it is. So I want to make sure that you guys can see like the whole thing. This is the Calm Down Cardigan by Lily Kate Makes and I love it. The sleeves, well okay wait let me say the stuff about it. So yes this is a Calm Down Cardigan. It's a tiny bit wet on my body so it's not the best. Um, <clears throat> this I knit in Woolberry very natural decay in the colorway cool breeze which is just it I mean you guys can see it it's the most perfect barely there blue it's like a neutral but it's also a blue and I love it and my like cool neutral loving heart is just absolutely singing with this colorway I love it so much uh, I knit size one and I used a US 5 needle for most of the body and I think it turned out great. This did, I thought this button man was going to kill me. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. I really, <laughs> oh, okay. This is the smallest size. For my size, it was recommended that I buy seven skeins of the DK weight yarn, which I was like, there's no way I'm going to use seven skeins. I used, I did not use seven skeins, but I used I think almost all of six skeins of yarn for this, which for me, if I'm going to do a DK weight sweater, I normally will buy four skeins of yarn. And that's a little light. Sometimes I'll use five, but using all of six, like this sweater uses a lot of yarn and it's very like oversized. You can see that the armhole is really deep and it's longer. I mean, I guess I normally knit cropped sweaters, so that's part of it too. Um, I think the sleeves turn out a touch long for me, so I will probably wear it with the sleeves cuffed, but this is so cozy. The yarn is so soft. The pattern is so, I mean, it's so cozy and it's so squishy and nice. I think the pattern and yarn pairing was perfect for this. Um, I don't have the button sewed on yet. Like I said, it's not dry yet, but... I will show you my buttons because they're so cute. Here's one of them. Look at that here. Let me make it focus. There we go. Look at that. Hey, little bees. Oh, you can see the recording light is reflecting off the button. <laughs> Whoops. But here is the button. And I actually, I have four of them. So I did slightly modify this pattern. One of my buttons broke in half though and my dad helped me super glue it back. I don't know if you can tell the crack down the middle of this one, but it is super glued back so hopefully it'll stick, it'll stay together. But anyway, I did slightly modify this pattern. The pattern as written um, has only three buttons and it has almost like a notch out of it at the bottom. So instead of the button band going like straight down, on both sides, it kind of like goes in a little bit. It's almost like a little triangle is cut out of the bottom. I don't know how to describe this. I'm probably not describing it well, but 
Um, I did not like that. I wanted, I wanted it to just be like more kind of standard cardigan and I wanted to use four buttons as well. So I just didn't do the notch when I was knitting it. And then when I was doing like the button band and everything, I just did my own kind of math to figure out where to space the buttonholes. And then I'll just sew the buttons on in the right places. But yeah, I feel like it turned out really nice. I think this is going to be perfect. It almost has like a robe like feel to me. I think it's going to be perfect to just like toss on. Um, it's really nice and warm. It's really soft. I think it'll go with a lot of stuff because it's just a beautiful, like it's a color, but it's a neutral as well. So yeah, and I knit this along with some of my friends and my Seattle knitting group and also um, from the San Francisco knitting group as well. We were all kind of knitting this together and I think some of us are starting to finish them. So yeah, it turned out really cute. It is still a little wet, so I am going to go ahead and take it off and lay it back on the blocking mats. I should unfold the cuffs. And also, I think my dogs need to go outside, so I'm going to let them out and then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back and I just put my Aurelia back on and I put my Calm Down Cardigan back on the blocking mats and the dogs have peed and so we're back and we're ready to keep going. So that was the last of my finished objects and now I have, I guess I have a half finished object that I can share with y'all. I don't think this was done when I last recorded. Um, this is just, it's basically a vanilla sock. I actually used the numbers and the heel instructions from the DRK Everyday Socks by Andrea Mowry, um, but I didn't do the ribbing. So that is a, like a ribbed sock, but I didn't, I just basically didn't do the ribbing and I just did it without that. But I finished the first sock. I have not cast on the second sock yet. I have like quite a few outstanding socks that I need to finish up. Um, so this one needs a mate, but I did finish the first one. The yarn is Stress Knit's favorite, and the colorway is in my hometown. This was the uh, final day, like full skein from her advent last, or like the, I guess it was the 2022 advent. Um, like the 2022 countdown, um, and this is the full skein. I think this colorway is just really pretty. It's so subtle but it's like all my favorite colors. It's yellow with like teal and coral and like peachy. I don't know, I just really like it. So this is a great one that I did a lot of on travels just cause it's like a vanilla sock. It's re really great. I did a lot of this like knitting and walking when we were doing like city tours or like while we're on the bus or that kind of thing. Um, this I would just like toss in my crossbody bag because it was small enough and take along with me. So I think of this as kind of like a travel sock because I did a lot of it. I don't know why I'm like, <laughs> like smacking myself in the head with it. Um, but anyway, yeah, I finished the first one, but I haven't, I haven't even cast on the second one yet. So that's my half finished object. Oh, and I did this 60 stitch size. That pattern, the DRK, I'm about to smack myself in the face with this. I did the 60 stitch size. That pattern, the DRK Everyday Socks, has a ton of sizes. I actually originally started with the one size smaller than that, and then I got a good part of the way through the sock. I may have actually even done the heel, and then I was like, this is too small. My new, my new gauge with my little pinky wrap. If you don't remember me talking about this, basically I was such a loose knitter that I couldn't get gauge on anything and especially like trying to knit socks was brutal for me because they just always turned out too loose and too big. I could not get gauge and so I decided to try retensioning my yarn by like wrapping it around my pinky and that has helped a ton and it's really tightened up my sock gauge but I think I overcorrected a little bit because I then... <laughs> my socks were too tight and so I had to pull this one out and re-knit it at a larger size but I think this size will work out I think this is the right size for me so maybe I'm a 60 stitch sock I guess I could go up a needle size now too but I don't know I own a whole bunch of size zero needles so I kind of want to stick with that so I'll just probably do 60 stitch socks now I don't know, you guys size zero needle, which is what this is. 
So that is my half finished object. And then I have some works in progress. So why don't I start talking about just all the other socks that I have that are works in progress. This one, I hadn't worked on in a long time and I just picked back up and did quite a bit on yesterday. So this is my Little Black Socks by Summerly Knits. And the yarn is Magpie Fibers Swanky Sock in the colorway Ghost Town. And I did the smallest size, which I don't remember how many, it might not be 60 stitches. It might be though. I don't actually remember. It could be 60 stitches. Um, and this is again a US size zero needle. This is actually, these are like these needles that I got in Mexico when we went like last year, or I guess now 2022. Um, because my needles were confiscated at the airport, my metal ones. And so I went to a like craft store and bought these like plastic needles and for some reason I don't know why I had this sock I think I I don't know I think I like ran out of needles I don't know but anyway I went to a basketball game last night and I was nervous about my metal needles setting off the metal detector so I just took this sock project because it was on plastic needles so that was great and then I knit I mean not a whole bunch but I knit some on at the basketball game. Anyway, the point is I'm knitting the sock again. This is the first one and I'm like maybe an inch away from being able to put in the toe. This line here is where I put in like waist yarn for the heel. I'll go back and do the heel later. But I am maybe one more inch and then I'll put the toe in. But I really love this yarn and I also really like this pattern. I feel like I'm gonna knit this pattern again. But the like subtle texture and the cables are really nice. And I learned how to cable without a cable needle, so that makes this a lot easier as well. This isn't a great on-the-go sock. Like, whenever I do the cables, I do have to pay attention and look down, so I wouldn't take this one and, like, knit on it while I'm walking or anything like that. Um, I'm not as much of a basketball fan as I am other sports, so it was fine to work on at the basketball game because I didn't care if I had to look down and, like, pay attention to my cable. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah. This is a little black socks. And my hope is that I can finish these in the next week before we leave for our next trip. But I did cast on some other new stuff. I think it's just one other thing, so we'll see. But my hope was that during this time period before, because, okay, so I guess I didn't really talk about this. I finished Aurelia and then I finished Calm Down Cardigan and I don't want to start my next garment project until like right before I leave for my next trip because I think I've talked about this before but like efficiency wise I want I don't want to bring very much on my trips that's already been knit because that's just like space inefficient if that makes sense. I want to bring yarn that hasn't been knit yet and then knit it on the trip. So I don't like to bring projects that are like halfway through, halfway done or whatever. I want to bring projects at the very beginning stage so that I can knit it, like knit it on the trip. And this next trip is going to be like five weeks long. So I'm going to talk a little bit later about what I'm going to bring on that trip. But the idea is that I'm not going to start my next garment until we leave on that trip because I don't want to have a week's worth of knitting that I do here before we travel because... I don't know if, like, does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, so I have a whole bunch of sock projects outstanding that I really want to finish. And I was hoping to finish in this week, but then I cast something on new last night. Anyway, so anyway, I'll talk about that in a second, but I have my little black socks. I at least want to finish the first sock before we leave. I don't know if I'll finish the second one, but I do want to finish the first one. My other sock project that I wrote, uh, mentioned a little bit earlier as well is my Christmas socks. So we, Maya and I did a Christmas Eve cast on again this year. And so actually last year I knit these self-striping socks and Maya got a different colorway and we each only used half the yarn. And so we actually just swapped yarns this year. And so I started knitting these. So this colorway is, I think it's Scumbuddy Loves Christmas. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's the colorway name. 
And so this is the colorway that Maya used for her Christmas socks last year. And so then this year she's using this colorway. So anyway, this was our Christmas Eve cast on. Um, this is the first sock, so I haven't done a ton. And this is the yarn. So I'm basically like I kind of weighed it and I'm just going to go until I've used about half of the yarn for this sock and then I'll knit the second one. I'm going to do a true afterthought heel for this as well just because I want to knit as long as I can. So I want to knit until I've done like half of the yarn and then I'll just go back and put the heel in wherever it fits. And I'm going to use this yarn for the heel and probably the toe as well. This I actually got, I think I made like a lichen and lace order at some point and I'm pretty sure she just threw in this mini with my order. Um, I believe, uh, I think the colorway name is Shrub, but I think it's just like a sock yarn and I thought it went really well with this. So I'm just gonna use that for the heels and toes. I didn't think I had enough to do cuffs, heels and toes. Hopefully I have enough for both heels and toes, but yeah. And this, I'm not really following a pattern or anything. I'm just doing a three by one ribbed sock. I believe this is 60 stitches on a US size zero. And again, I'm just gonna go until I've like used half of the yarn. And I probably won't like make my socks match necessarily either. Like I won't make it so that I start the other one at the exact same stripe. So they'll be kind of mismatched. Like these ones, I made them match exactly but I don't think I'll do that for this. I think it's fine, so. Yeah, but I think they'll be really nice. More Christmas socks. Um, so that is another sock whip. And then I also have a sock whip that I barely just started. So I talked about this yarn, I think, on my last project update video, but I was actually gifted some yarn from Kremke Soul Wool, and this is their Edelweiss Alpaca six ply so it's more like a sport weight sock yarn it has wool and nylon and then it actually has a little bit of alpaca as well which makes it really soft and so I started a sock I've done very little but I started a sock in this yarn um here it is it's just like a little tiny <laughs> <laughs> a little tiny top but the reason that I didn't continue further is because I think that I'm not knitting the right size I think these are not going to be right it's hard because I mean since this is a thicker yarn you have to do like fewer stitches but I didn't know exactly how many stitches to cast on I was roughly following the easy socks pattern that the yarn company actually included in the package for me um but I think I'm going to rip this out and I'm going to actually do a pair of DRK everyday socks because since there are so many sizes and there are sizes even for kids, what I figure I can do is once I know how many stitches I want around, I can just use whatever size has like that stitch circumference. Even if it's like, you know, a kid's size, I can follow the instructions for that size with like a thicker yarn and it'll turn out bigger. So I'm not sure exactly what size, but I do think I'm going to rip this out and I'm just going to do a pair of DRK Everyday Socks because I love that sock pattern and I wanted to do cozy rib socks for this yarn. So I think I'll probably do that, but I really do like the yarn. It was, it's really soft and I think it's going to make really cozy socks in this color. Y'all know I love a good mustard. So I really am antsy to get that done too. So ideally... In the next week, I would be able to finish these socks, finish these socks, and finish these socks. But that's probably a lot because if I knit like an eight hour day, I can knit one sock, one fingering weight sock in a day, but I've only done that like once. I mean, that's kind of a lot. So I don't expect that of myself, but yeah, I just don't think, I don't, I don't think these are going to get done. I think that if I was focused, I could maybe finish both of these pairs of socks before I go. But if I'm being honest with you, I don't think that's going to happen because I did cast something new on. <laughs> so <laughs> the new thing that I cast on last night is I just, I like knitting socks, but I, I'm not really a sock knitter. I don't think. 
I n like knitting socks. I like having hand knit socks, but I prefer, I mean, I'm a, I'm a garment girly. I love to knit garments. That's my thing at this point, but I'm telling myself I'm not casting on a new garment until I like until next week. So I have this week gap. I thought I was going to finish all the socks, but then I was like, no, I was really, I don't know. I was just in a mood yesterday to cast on something new. And I also was just, I've had this yarn for a while and I have this like really special memory of getting this yarn. And I was feeling kind of like, I don't know, I was in my feelings, in my feels last night. And I was like, I really want to cast on with this yarn. So anyway, I cast on last night the Fern Collar, which is a pattern from Knitting for Olive, and this doesn't look like anything yet, but I'll put a picture of it on the screen maybe so that y'all can see what it looks like. If you've watched for a while, one, you know that I love ferns. I love ferns. Actually, this project bag that I have has ferns on it because I love ferns so much. Why is this project not in this bag? I don't know. I need to make that change because it's the fern color. It needs to be in the fern bag, but Anyway, um, I had this thought that I, well, I've, okay, Knitting for Olive has a whole, like, set of fern patterns. They have a fern sweater, they have a fern scarf, a fern collar, I think they have a fern t-shirt, and they all use this really beautiful lace stitch pattern, which I love, and it does have that fern kind of feeling. And so I've always wanted to knit one of the fern patterns, and I got the itch to knit the fern collar. I thought that it would work really well because when we're packing for travel, sometimes, like, I just, I don't have a lot of room in my suitcase a lot of the time, especially if I'm expecting to bring stuff back. And, like, we're going on a trip in March and April. We're going to Spain and Scotland and Ireland, and it's going to be a little chilly, I think at times in Scotland and Ireland, and I don't have room in my suitcase to bring a full like shawl or scarf because it just takes up so much room. So I thought, what if I knit a little collar? And then it'll keep me warm, I can tuck it underneath my jacket, but it doesn't take up the same space in my suitcase as like a full shawl or scarf. So that was part of it. And then this yarn I've had for a couple years, it's from Cascade Rose Alpacas. And it's a local alpaca farm in Washington, I guess not local to me right now, but was formerly local to me, that my husband actually took me to for my birthday a couple years ago. And I got some of their yarn. This is actually, it just says, I'll show you the tag here. It says yarn from our alpaca Chelsea. And it's a sport weight yarn and it feels so nice. And it's just 100% alpaca from, and I got to meet the alpaca that this wool was from, or is it still called wool? I guess, I don't know, that the yarn like was made from her fleece. And so I just thought that was so special and sweet. And I just, I don't know, I was feeling like in my feelings last night. And it's like, I just really want to knit with this yarn. I've had it for a while and it feels really special to me. And I think it would be perfect for this project. Except it's not actually for perfect for this project because the gauge is super different. So the pattern uses Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino and a soft silk mohair held together, which is like a worsted weight plus a lace weight. And this is a sport weight. So I could have probably made it by just holding the sport weight double, like holding it with itself, but I only have two skeins of this. So I thought I wouldn't actually have enough. And I, I don't know, I just didn't really want to do that. So what I did instead, I did find a mohair in my stash. So I am holding these two together, but it's still just a sport weight and a lace weight held together. So it's not nearly as thick as the pattern calls for. So what I did was I just bought the pattern and then I figured based on what the pattern looks like that there was just like a repeat kind of throughout and that I could just like do more of that repeat. So I basically just cast on more stitches. I did the gauge math to figure it out. And I also like I have a really small neck and I think for something that's going to be keeping me warm under my jacket, I want it to be quite close to my neck. So I did make a little modification there as well. But then I just cast on a whole bunch more stitches and I'm just gonna do more repeats of the lace pattern and I think it will turn out fine. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I cast on last night, I've done like 
an inch and a half, I guess. Not very much. But I am enjoying knitting this more than I am enjoying knitting socks right now. So I'll probably work on this more than the socks. So I may not finish any pairs of socks before I leave on my trip. Whoops. Maybe I can at least finish the first sock of both of those pairs. If I finish at least one of the little black socks and one of the Christmas socks, that would be good, right? I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know, but... I just got excited about this and now that's this is all I really want to work on and I want to finish it so that is my fern collar and then so I yeah I guess there are three sizes in the pattern but I'm not knitting any of them and I am knitting this on a US 5 needle I think I actually don't know I think it's a US 5 um okay then I have one more work in progress that I was going to share with y'all. This one I actually cast on a while ago. And I have ripped it out and restarted it multiple times. And I actually think I'm going to rip it out and restart it one more time. So here it is. This I talked about before that I wanted to cast it on. This is actually the Crosshatch by Jared Flood. It's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. And this I just have been itching to I want this finished wrap really badly but I also I mean it's I mean it, it's brioche like it's fun to knit as well but anyway okay so here it is this is the crosshatch except it's slightly modified the yarns I'm using are Durerum Natura Gilead in the colorway Fusain and this is I had some left over from the sweater I knit for my husband and and then I just bought like two more balls because I needed a couple more and then the cream yarn is some yarn that I got at Rhinebeck at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival it's a cream merino I think I have a skein of it here because I wanted to show the tag it's from Spinaway Farm and it's just 100% Italian merino here's the tag you want to see it I don't know if it's focusing well enough for you to read that but Anyway, um, from Spinaway Farm, and so I wanted to use this together. I really wanted this very graphic, like high contrast look. So using um, similar to they what they use for the sample, this like black and white yarn. The I'm using like a dark gray, so it's not quite black and white, but I think it still has the same kind of effect. And so, okay, the pattern. It is a paid for a pattern, so I'm not going to say too much. But basically, the pattern doesn't include... It, okay, it includes two different options for edging, and I didn't like either of them. <laughs> so I decided to make up my own edging and just do, like, an I-cord edging. But because it's brioche, I was only going to do the I-cord edging in one color. <clears throat> and I think what has happened is that my I-cord is shorter than the fabric and I need to do like extra I-cord rows to a, to compensate for that because otherwise it's kind of like tugging up like I don't know if you can really see that very well but it's like this part is too short the edging is too short and the it's like shorter than the actual fabric and so it's tugging it up a little bit so I think I'm going to restart and I'm just going to do more I-cord rows per row of brioche but I have like ripped this out and recast on like three times so I'm annoyed about starting it again but I started this a while ago I haven't worked on it a ton mostly because I do think I am going to take this on my trip and I don't again efficiency wise I don't want to have I don't want to knit too much on it before I leave but I do think that I'm going to rip it out and recast on before I leave because I want I don't want it to be I don't want to be casting on like I did a tubular cast on and oh my gosh this is gonna be like the third or fourth time I've done this tubular cast on it's kind of a lot of stitches too like this is a wrap this is gonna use a lot of yarn I hope that doing the extra eye cord is not gonna use up so much yarn that like I don't have enough I guess I'll just go I mean it's a wrap I'll just go for as long as I can but Anyway, there are two sizes for the 
crosshatch and I'm doing the wrap size there's like a scarf size which is just like fewer stitches and I'm doing the wrap size because I want this to be massive I want it to be huge and I want to wrap myself up in it and I am yeah I'm just really wanting that but I don't know do we think that if I just started doing more I cord rows from here on it would be okay no I think I need to restart really annoying it's very annoying I'm annoyed with myself I think this is a US size 6 needle but it could be a 7 I'm not actually sure if I had a needle gauge next to me I would figure that out for sure but hopefully I'll do this and then I'll post it on the screen properly but yeah this is crosshatch and I think it's gonna be really nice I do think it's also gonna take forever to knit but like this is the right kind of project to take on my travel because again I'm traveling for five weeks I'm very scared about not bringing enough knitting so this is the kind of thing that I want to bring because I feel like it's going to take forever and that's exactly what I'm looking for so that is my last work in progress sorry that was really loud I like smacked my project down on my notebook um that's my last work in progress so what next? I have some spinning. I have some spinning to share about. So I, oh, I forgot one thing that I wanted to show. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. So I do have a spinning finished object and that's what I had to go get because I forgot to grab it that I wanna share. This is my most recent finished spin. Here it is. So it is not a full skein. I don't know how much it actually is. Um, maybe like 48, like just, I think it's less than 50 grams. Like, may I, or am I remembering that it was 148 yards? I don't remember, but anyway, it's not a full skein, but this I spun up from my friend Bridget gave me some Rolex that she actually made and I had never spun Rolex before so I kind of just wanted to try it. Um, so that is what I did. I decided originally I was going to kind of spin them together with something else but then I thought okay I'm going to just spin it with itself and like play it with itself and then I'll have to make just my little Rolex game. So I did that. I spun up the Rolex and I applied them and this was my first finished spin of this year. I finished it just like a couple weeks ago. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I do feel like with the Rolex, it was a lot harder for me to get a consistent thickness. Um, I spun this just on my, I, on, I only have one wheel, so <laughs> I spun it on my wheel. This is my, on my, I'm looking at it right now. That's why I'm looking to the side. On my Shocked Ladybug. And I do feel like I had a little bit more trouble when I was drafting it, just like getting a consistent thickness, but... I'm still pretty happy with how it turned out. There are some like thick and thin spots. And I think that I just need to get used to, I did do like a short forward woolen draft style, or sorry, worsted draft style, even though the prep was woolen. So I guess this is a, would be considered a semi, semi woolen yarn. But I think that with Rolex, it maybe would have been better to try a woolen drafting style, like a short backward or a long draw, but I'm not, I was nervous and I'm, I'm not quite there yet. So I'm excited to try that soon. I think maybe once I finish my current project, I'm going to try to do at least like short backward. Sorry if I'm saying things about spinning that, like the terminology is new or um, that y'all don't know about or I may be using it incorrectly and I may be saying the things wrong because again I'm like definitely a beginner spinner, but um, I still am pretty much only comfortable with short forward drafting and so that is something that I am excited to try more now this year, but I have started a new spin. I am spinning for the Traveler Shawl by Andrea Mowry and I'm doing a combo spin for this pattern and I am using three braids of fiber that I had in my stash and I don't I mean I don't have them to show because I started spinning them already but I had two club colorways from the nest fiber club and then I had one braid that I bought at 
I believe it was at Woolen Folk, um, at like in at Rhinebeck this year. So I um, decided that I was just gonna spin those three braids end to end, and then I'm was just gonna apply them together. So that would give me some really nice, long, slow color changes. And they all had one color kind of in common. They all had this like periwinkly blue in them. And so I thought that would kind of be a good through line through the three braids. So I finished spinning the first braid. This is one of the nest clubs. This is Cabin Fever. Did I say that weird? Cabin Fever? from the Nest Fiber Club and uh, this was on BFL and so I finished this one and then I started spinning my next one. This one, I love how this is turning out. This is Spring Ahead from the Nest Fiber Club and I don't remember what months they're from. I kind of think they're like March and April maybe, February and March from 2023. But anyway, here they are, and I think it's going to be just a really fun, like, blue dominant rainbow is my feeling that I'm going to get from this. I think it's going to be really pretty when I apply them together. But again, I'm just using, like, a traditional, like, a standard short forward drafting style for this, um, and I'm just spinning it pretty thin, I think, like, as thin as I can, well, not as thin as I can get, but pretty thin, and then I'm going to just apply all three together. So I'll just create three separate bobbins and then I'll just apply them together and hopefully I'll have enough yardage. I'm a little nervous that I'm not going to have enough but luckily Andrea wrote two different sizes for the shawl. The pattern I'm talking about also, I don't know if I, I said the traveler shawl. Um, it's a pattern by Andrea Mowry. She wrote two sizes for it so I think I'll probably just have to do the smaller size and We'll see how it turns out. But I have actually been spinning every single day for the last, I guess, like week and a half. I don't know. Maybe that's not that much. But I have been really trying to stick to it. I just like to start my day with spinning and getting into a routine like that has been really nice. So yeah, that's how I've been able to get through so much of this. Even if I'm just spinning for like 30 minutes, it has really added up and I've been able to spin and like get through a lot more, more than I have been able to otherwise even though like I think I was a lot more spurty with my spinning before I would sit down and I would spin for hours like once a week um but now I'm just doing a little bit each day and I think that that has been I've really enjoyed that I think that's been better for me so that is my spinning updates and then like I said I do have actually one acquisition or I guess kind of two I have one yarn acquisition I got some yarn for Christmas this is yarn that I did pick out but I gave um the idea to one of my family members which is my grandma to give to me for Christmas I got a couple of skeins of Stars Hollow from Sorella Yarns. So I am a big Gilmore Girls fan and this was from their Gilmore Girls collection. And these colors were just too perfect for me. Like you'll know that I, well if you've watched my videos before, you know that I'm really big on like teals, golds, and rusty reds. And I think that's like exactly the colors in this skein. So it's like a really beautiful kind of oat base with this gorgeous gold, focus please, and blue and red speckles, which is gorgeous. I'm obsessed with this yarn. So I got two skeins because my plan is to use this in a dopio. So that is a pattern that has been going around that I think is pretty popular right now. It is a pretty basic raglan shape. Actually, it's kind of cool. I think it has like a curved raglan. And it uses two or three strands of yarn held together at a really thick gauge. And there have been some really gorgeous, really pretty color combinations that people have done that are like almost unexpected that I've really liked. And I thought this would be really perfect in a dopio. And so originally I actually bought a couple of skeins of yarn from um, Woolen Folk at Rhinebeck. And this one is also, my yarns are just coming undone. And I'm not loving that. Let me just stick this in kind of. Anyway, I 
I got two skeins of this yarn from McMullen Fiber Co. Originally to use in Adopio. It's just like a, a brighter white with really subtle speckles. The colorway I think is Naughty Sheep, <laughs> which I think is so cute. It has these like little subtle speckles in it. And I kind of thought when I bought this yarn that I could hold these two together and then hold like a mohair or a surreal alpaca with it. But I think this one is too warm and this one is too cool. And I don't love them together. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one and then I'm just going to get a solid oat colored fingering weight and like an oaty colored alpaca silk, like a fluffy yarn. So those two will be just like beigey oat. And then this will have the speckles of color. So the color will be pretty subtle. The overall sweater will be like beigey oatmeal kind of, which I know is like not really, like I tend to go toward cool neutrals over warm neutrals, but I just think this will be too good. And maybe even if it's not like the best color on me, I think I'll still really love the sweater. I don't know. I'm hopeful. But anyway, I think with those two like oatmeal, like solid oatmeal colors held with this, I think it'll be really pretty. So I'm really excited about that. I don't know when I'm going to knit that. I really had the itch to get the yarn and start it. But again, like this is not a great project to take for travel because it's such a loose gauge, like, or not loose gauge, but it's like, I bring bringing a lot of yarn for not very much knitting time because it's knit at such a thick gauge. So I'm going to bring a different garment project on my travels and I'm going to keep this one ready. I'm, I haven't bought the other yarns for it yet because I'm trying to hold myself to only buying yarn this year on travel or if I'm going to immediately cast it on and I knew I wasn't going to immediately cast it on so I'm not going to buy it yet. So I'm waiting and then maybe when I come back from this trip or like in the fall I think would be a really good time to knit this sweater. Um, also I always like to rewatch Gilmore Girls in the fall so I feel like this would be really perfect if like in the end of September, early October I start this sweater. I think I'll knit it, it'll knit up really quickly and I can knit along while I start like rewatching Gilmore Girls in the fall. I think that would be really perfect. And then it's going to be such a warm sweater that I don't even know. I may not even be able to wear it until winter because it's going to be so warm. So I think that will be perfect. So I'll probably wait on this, but I am really excited about it. The colors I think are so me, just like really perfect. And I'm very excited about it. So that is my yarn acquisition. And then the other thing I actually did get... It is not yarn or fiber or anything, but I wanted to show on here because I think it's really fun. I got a cap, like a ball cap, and I am a baseball cap girly. I love a baseball cap. I wear baseball caps all the time, but I wanted to show this one on here because I think it's really fun. So this is something I asked for. I put it kind of on my Christmas list and um, my grandma actually got for me as well. This is from, I think it's called Deegan or I don't know how to pronounce it, Dagan, Deegan, um, and it's just a little cap that says on it, one more row, which I think is so cute, and I love it a lot, and I've been wearing it a ton already, um, and all my family members that were there, like, when I got the hat were like, this is perfect for you, because you constantly are saying, I normally don't say, one more row, I normally say, can I finish my row? I say all the time. So like, if I'm sitting down and doing something and my husband is like, do you wanna go for a walk? Or like, let's go to dinner or whatever. I always say, can I finish my row? Can I finish my row? <laughs> can I finish my row? And so this is really perfect for me. It's actually really funny because while we were in the car driving to my grandma's house to celebrate for Christmas, I was knitting on something in the car and I told my dad like can you slow down I need to finish my row before we arrive so he was like driving slowly up to their house so that I could finish my row and then we went in and then I received this hat and they were all like this is perfect for Emily so um I very much like it I also I love I love a baseball cap so um I wanted to share that on here as well and I'll try to put a link I think the hat is still available so if anyone wants to match 
I love this hat and I think it's really cute. So, um, so yeah, that's my acquisitions. That's my spinning. So that's pretty much all. I mean, I have some other kind of yarn related stuff, but that's it for like the project updates and everything. Um, a couple other things that I wanted to mention that I actually got some questions about before on my one of my previous videos. I mentioned, I think in my goals video, that I really want to improve my photography skills this year, both for knit for like knitting reasons, so for taking pictures of my finished objects, but also for travel reasons. So I just want I wanted to have a better kind of baseline photography understanding, like understanding of the fundamentals, and then go from there, like learn how to take portraits better, learn how to take like nature photography better and like product photography so I can take better flat lays and that kind of, I just I would really love to improve my photography across the board and so I did a little bit of research online and I found that this site called creative live has a whole bunch of really cool photography courses they also have a whole bunch of really cool courses about tons of other things so like there's some other stuff that I really want to learn on there there's stuff about um like graphic design there are courses about, I mean, there's courses about everything. All it's it's specifically Creative Live. It seems like it's online courses that are specifically geared toward more um, creative and like I don't want to say artsy, but that more that kind of thing. Um, and so I got actually from my other grandma, I got um, money for a creative life subscription because when I looked at how much the courses, specific courses cost, it actually made a ton more sense to just get a full subscription and then I could take as many classes as I want. And so I just got a yearly subscription, like a one year subscription for creative live. And I actually started my first photography class and I can link the specific class that I started um, down below because uh, so I got a question about from someone on my last uh, video just about what the photography classes were that I was taking and I, I don't have like a full endorsement for it yet because I haven't gone far enough in it I'm still at the very beginning but it seems like it's gonna be good and the cool thing about it too is that I can and I'm not I'm not like being paid or sponsored by them or anything this is just like something I found on my own that I'm taking but I the other thing that I think is cool is they actually have an app and you can download the videos and the um, lessons and stuff. And I think that'll be really nice for me for like on flights. I am able to do that, that kind of thing. Even when I'm not sitting at home, I am able to watch the videos. So I'm really excited about that. I've only done the first like few lessons, but I think it's going to be good. I'm excited. I really love learning new things. I really like to learn. So I'm excited about that. So I think that's going to be really cool. Also, I thought that it's been a while since I've done just like a general kind of life update. I feel like I talk, I've talked a little bit about our travel, but I haven't really talked about other stuff. And so aside from my goals for like knitting and everything for this year, I just... I am I am a person who likes to do like new new, new year blah, blah, blah. I'm a person who likes to do new year's resolutions I really like to do um I am a person who likes to reflect a lot generally I'm constantly like I'm the person where if you go do an activity with me afterward I'm like okay everyone tell me what you thought about it and what was your favorite part and would you want to do it again and I'm just that's the type of person that I am I really really like to reflect and I don't know, maybe this doesn't really make sense with what I'm trying to talk about, but I, aside from like my knitting goals and everything, I just have like goals and stuff in general in my life that I like to set both at the new year, but also just like periodically throughout the year. I do a lot of like checking in on myself and um, like making goals and that kind of thing. And so I'm actually, my sister started doing b bullet journaling this year and I'm too scared to go all the way into like the deep end of bullet journaling because I don't know, it's, I mean, she did such a good job with it. Maybe I could have done it, but I just got scared and especially like, I don't know, I don't want to use travel as an excuse for everything, but I just didn't think, but anyway, I want to do baby steps. So what I found is I'm, I'm very much a planner girly. 
feel like I'm calling myself a a girly of all different types of varieties today but um I got a new planner for this year and I found online from this site called mochi things I think is what it's called um it's actually a store they have a physical location in Seattle and so I was bummed that I don't live in Seattle anymore and I couldn't go to the store but I got my planner and uh I am very much here I go again. I'm very much a to-do list girly. I love a good to-do list. So I got a new planner that actually includes a little section for the to-do list each day. So here's what it looks like. I'll open it to a blank page. But each day it has a to-do list on the side in it that I can use, which I think is really cool. And then for each week I got these habit tracker sticky notes. So rather than doing like a bullet journal where I draw out my habit tracker and I do it myself I just got these sticky notes that I put each week into my planner and then I can mark my habit track like I can do my habit tracking just in my planner which I really like and I think has been so much fun um, so far so I'm just tracking things like did I drink my, enough water and did I do my skincare the answer is probably no, but I'm trying. I'm improving. The sticky note is helping me. So like, did I do my skincare? And did I spin? Especially since I'm trying to spin every day, I put my spinning on my little habit tracker. And so just stuff like that. And I think it's been really fun. And I don't know, I just wanted to talk about it. I'm trying to revive my sourdough starter, which was kind of dead. Um, <laughs> so that is also a thing I'm trying to do. And... The other thing that I wanted to talk about that was kind of fun is I started this year using my maker's notebook from Making Treasures. And so this is one of the things I have on my habit tracker too, which is to fill in my like my knitting journal. But this, this is so thoughtfully put together. I can't even tell you. It's so well done. I love it. And y'all, like... If you like to write things down, like to physically write things down, you have to get one of these. It's really, really cool. But it has a whole bunch of sections in there. And one of them is like the project notes section, which is just where you can put, like for each project, you can put all the information. There's spots for like your gauge, the size you're knitting, all that kind of stuff. I need to fill in that I finished this. This was like two days ago. But like when I was doing the respacing for my buttonholes on that calm down cardigan that I talked about I did all that in here and I wrote down like the modifications that I made and I just it's so nice but the thing that I'm really enjoying that I had the idea to do and I think is really cool and I wanted to show you is there's a yearly overview section and what I did is for each day I drew a little line for which projects I worked on so I don't know if you can really see this, but I have colored pens and each different pen color, I made like a key down here for my different projects. And then I draw a line in the calendar for that day if I worked on that project. So you can see that I mostly, over the last like couple weeks, I mostly worked on my calm down cardigan. But then like yesterday I started the fern collar and so I have like my purple line started yesterday. I don't know if this like makes any sense, but I think it's really fun and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm just, so then at the end of the year, I can see like what projects I worked on each day. And I just, I don't know, I think it's really fun, but I'm gonna try to figure out a space to put in my spinning projects in here as well. There's a section for like your project Q, which I think is gonna be perfect for um, when I buy yarn for a specific project, but I haven't cast on yet. I can put that in my queue and I have like I, I have only put in the calm down cardigan in my project notes but I have some other projects that I want to put in there anyway I've been doing this and I love it and I also I think doing writing it down in here I thought oh is this going to mean I'm only going to write it down here and I'm not going to update Ravelry but I think in some ways it makes me more likely to update Ravelry because I'm like okay I put it in here I need to put update Ravelry as well and so like I actually for my calm down cardigan I actually put my gauge in Ravelry can y'all believe that? Who is she? I don't know, but I'm actually doing it. I'm doing the thing. So I don't know. I just wanted to share that. I'm really excited about this and I'm like 
actually sticking to it and every night before I go to bed I just go in and I draw my little colored lines for like which projects I worked on and then I like do my little habit tracker and I mark down if I drank my water and the answer is probably no but like I'm just having a lot of fun with it so anyway I wanted to share about that too and then that's pretty much it the last thing I was going to talk about was just my knitting plans for this next trip we are leaving uh like I mentioned next week so one week from today on Thursday we're going to First, we're going to um, San Francisco, San Francisco area. We're going to be in San Francisco and Napa both a little bit just to visit some friends. And then from there, we are heading off to Australia and New Zealand. And this is going to be a long trip. It's going to be about five weeks total. And I'm so excited, but I'm scared about packing enough knitting. Like five weeks is so long, but I think I'm only going to bring three projects. And... I think it's gonna be enough, but I just reclaimed the yarn yesterday for one project that I wanna bring. I had tried multiple iterations of patterns with this yarn. Those of you that have watched the podcast from the beginning may remember. I have this yarn, it's Jerome Natura Ulysse in the colorway Poids Blanc. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but anyway. And I like, this was the horrible gauge incident I had where I knit the entire body of a sweater, but, and I actually did gauge swatch, but I didn't actually do anything with my gauge swatch. I will, I will be thinking about that forever. I can't, I'll never forgive myself for that. Like that was just such a nightmare. But anyway, I did that and then I ripped it out and I started another pattern and it just like didn't really work out. So Anyway, I decided that with this yarn, I want to make a DRK everyday sweater. I'm so excited about this pattern. I've seen lots of folks make it and love it. My friend Maya made one. I, of course, want to make one and match her. So I think this yarn is going to be perfect for it. And so I reclaimed the yarn. I had these two were like, well, I have a whole bunch. I have more than I need, I think, actually. I have like some partial skeins and I have some full skeins that have been like caked up and everything. And so I am gonna take this with me on my trip. And I think this is gonna, I mean, like this is a sizable sweater. It's sport weight. I think it's gonna take me a while to knit. And I, it's mostly, I mean, it's fully stockinette. So it's gonna take me, or it's gonna be a good travel project for that reason. So I'm gonna take that. I mentioned that I'm gonna take crosshatch. So I'm gonna probably rip this out and re cast on and I'm going to take that with me on my trip and then I'm also going to take my Fjordland National Park yarn from Paisley Knits. This is New Zealand inspired yarn and I'm going to take it with me and I'm going to knit New Zealand socks while I'm in New Zealand. So I'm really excited about that as well. So I'm just going to take I think maybe I may take like if I've only this like this sock pattern or this sock yarn, if I finish the first sock, I may bring the yarn to knit the second sock as well. So then I would have like three socks worth of yarn with me. And then I think there's a good chance I'm gonna buy yarn on this trip. So hopefully I can, if I run out, I like I can, I will have bought yarn or I can get yarn or whatever that I can work on. And I'll just bring like a, I have a wooden needle set that I'll bring with me. So hopefully with that, I won't run out, but that's kind of my plan. I think I'm just going to bring like three projects, the sweater project, the wrap, and the sock project, and hopefully that'll be enough. But anyway, that's kind of my plan. That's what I want to talk about. I'm really excited for this trip. It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a really fun one. So I'm excited for that. I feel like I've been talking for an eternity already, so I'm going to probably call it here, but it's really good to check back in and chat with y'all. It will probably be until we come back so it will probably be like a month and a half two months from now <laughs> before I check in again but hopefully I've got lots of fun stuff finished and new things on the horizon at that point so thanks for sitting and chatting with me I hope you do lots of knitting and it's not baseball season but watch lots of sports it's NFL playoffs time so watch that and I hope you have a great week month two months, six weeks, however long it is until I talk to you again. Bye.